my name is Emma McHugh and this is Paddle Driven. So today we're going to do a very simple fall arrangement with lots of deep jewel tones in this fat conical vase from Accent Decor. So because the mouth of the vase is so wide, what we're going to do is we're going to tape it. So I filled it with water, as you can see. What we're going to do next is we make sure it's all the way clean and dry. Dry is very important when it comes to this floral tape because otherwise it won't stick. And then scissors. And this is floral tape from Oasis. It's very thin. You can get them in different widths. But this one should be fine. So you start by taping across the mouth of the vase in for a vase this size, probably I'm going to do about four strips across. But it depends on how big a vase you're working with. This is pretty much the start for any large centerpiece you're going to do. If you were going to do a large urn for next to a ceremony at a wedding, anything similar, you would start the same way. Okay. So once you have four lines across, the next thing you do in order to secure it Remember, you're going to be putting things past it. You do a line all the way around the outside, securing the vase. So also, when you work with larger sizes, you can go back and crisscross this way. Base this size, I don't think we need to. OK. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to take our larger flowers to start with. So I'm going to use the hydrangea. You're going to clear it of all its leaves. And then you're going to cut it to size. So the best way to figure out how tall you're going to make it is to take the flower and you hold it up to the side of the vase. So we're going to do a compact, low centerpiece, the hydrangea kind of grounding it. So in which case, I'm going to cut it right about here. And then you just slide it in and see the tape keeps it together. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the greens in. This is a great, super fun green. As you see, they're very thin, but we're going to use them in such a way that it, it works with the, the fluffiness of the stem. Big key about making your own centerpieces is make sure everything touches the water. A lot of time when florists are doing event centerpieces for a party, they don't necessarily ensure that everything is drinking properly. But when you're making flowers for your own home, it's the best to make sure that if you want it to last more than a day or so, that you give it all of the water it needs. So, as you see, it's giving it kind of a wild feeling, and that's what we want. A little loose, a little bit traditional, but not too much. Okay, so you can kind of see where the core of the centerpiece is going. You also tend to work in odd numbers. So for example, you see you have three hydrangea, and that's what your eye goes to. When you do four, the brain naturally wants to make it uneven. Don't ask me why, but it's true. So the next thing we're going to do is I have some more greens. This is actually a flower. This is a hanging verbenum. And we're going to kind of tuck these through. It's going to play with the green of the, of the foliage, but it'll also start to build a little bit more texture for the center pieces as well, for the main flowers. Okay. 
So what I want to do next is I'm going to go back in and add my hyacinth. So this is hyacinth. And it's, it's a little unusual to see this kind of flower in a fall arrangement. However, they're still blooming. We can still get them. And I'd like to use them up as however possible. Plus, it adds to the overall jewel quality. So you're going to do is you're going to give them a fresh cut because these, these flowers really do like to drink. And you're going to tuck them in amongst the hydrangea. So um, the hyacinth leaves actually fall off pretty easily. So I like to set them aside and sometimes I'll go back through the centerpiece depending on the way it looks and see if I need to ground them um, using a little bit more of the natural foliage. This is a 360 arrangement, so I am working from the back as you see. This is the kind of centerpiece that would be on a place card table, or if you walked into somebody's home, this would be in the foyer. Something to greet the guests as they enter and as they depart. So I want to add a little bit more volume. We still have this hole in the center here. So I'm going to use some kale. This is beautiful ornamental kale. As you see, the center is a little pink, so it really goes well with the flowers we're trying to do. It also, the shape mirrors the hydrangea. So an item like kale might start off as a as a filler. In this case, I'm going to highlight them just because they look so much like a rose that I think they'll go nicely along with the center. So what you can also do is you see I'm peeling the bottom leaves. Just thins them out a little bit and you can honestly peel them all the way up to just the white. As you see, it gets lighter as it goes up. As we have a lot of green already, we can stick with the pure, somewhat smaller heads. So as I'm building, I think I'm actually going to want one more hydrangea. To kind of bring it a little bit taller. So I'm going to part everything, add this back in. Yes, I think that definitely grounded it a bit more. And then I'm going to add a little bit more hyacinth back as well. Okay. And a touch of greens. The great thing about these greens too is that they're flexible so they cascade down slightly which is really fabulous because it brings the eye not just up but down. So 
So there you go. A lovely jewel tone, perfect centerpiece for this wet, beautiful weather we're having now where the summer's cooling off, but it's not quite winter yet. You still have that freshness of summer as well as those deep jewel tones of autumn. So I hope you liked it. Beneath this post will be a list of ingredients of all the flowers I use as well as well you can get them and where you can get this vase. I hope you enjoyed this new video from Petal Driven and I'll see you soon.